Booyah, and it's time for the Game Sports Show. It is your host, David McCaig Jr., bringing you another special edition upload powered by the Game Entertainment Media and sponsored by Little Caesars Pizza. This is special edition number 51, and you're tuning in on potentially the TGEM Network platform on YouTube or other areas where you get your podcast. Either way, welcome to another electrifying edition of the Game Sports Show. Now, getting to our Little Caesars special edition co-host here for tonight's upload, you know him by now, I'm sure. Okay, he's been on on a whole wide load of these special edition uploads, a lot of new shows. He's a former professional hockey player of over 1,000 games and hockey analyst for TGEM, Brendan Brooks. Brooksy, how's it going, pal? It's going good. It's always good to be back. Uh, really looking forward to the show. You know, we have a great guest and uh, can't wait to get her going. Now, we got a treat here, folks, someone whom is typically on my end of the microphone or camera. He's a Canadian. He's a graduate from Carleton University, and that's the first time I've ever stayed at someone's school on an introduction. The list I've known for this individual is long and certainly well-earned. As mentioned in his memo to yours truly, he wanted to come on the show, and with your help, by using the hashtag, he is here. He is a Canadian sportscaster with being a host on numerous shows within TSN, one of which being hockey. Before joining TSN, he worked in Vancouver and Ottawa. He's a four-time Canadian Screen Award winner, best host in a sports program recipient in 2018, best sports feature segment winner, three-time Gemini Award winner, excellence in sports casting in 2009 from Sports Media Canada, international Edward R. Morrow Award winner as well. He is also the author of many books. Four, to be exact, such as The Killer, The Day Almost Killed Two Gretzkys, The Guy on the Left, and most recently, Beauty's Greatest Untold Stories. Absolutely fantastic book. And with all this, he's also a charity ambassador. He's also acted as well. Yes, he is a sportscaster in the role and on the popular flick, Goon, The Last of the Enforcers, which is just hilarious. And his role was quite fitting where he paneled with TJ Miller. Oh, yeah. On top of that acting, he's also been in commercials as well, such as Pepsi and The Source. With being an actor, he's also a podcaster for the awesome show, The Rubber Boots Podcast, which is currently in season seven. Hoof, what a list of features. I probably missed a bunch, but obviously it's well known who this individual is. And if you don't know who he is, by now, you're going to know in just a few moments as this special guest was hired by TSN at the age of 30. And he's a big fan favorite across Canada with being one of the most followed media personalities on Twitter. He is someone that I and everyone enjoy watching. And with even saying it is someone I look up to as well. And I'm very excited to introduce the one and absolute only James Duthie. James, my friend, thanks for coming on the show. David, that's like the most elaborate introduction I've ever had for any. <laughs> remember when? Oh, yeah. uh, remember when Tiger? That one clip when uh, Tiger was off with Phil and like the last group, and they were rhyming off Tiger, all Tigers wins, and Phil cut him off halfway through and said, "Enough, enough." Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what I was thinking. Your listeners should probably say, "All right, enough already." <laughs> enough. All right. I actually but thought they, that you were going to do that for me too. You know, maybe you yeah. would have been the first to cut me off. I was kind of enjoying it. You know, you kind of forget about your life and uh, you kind of ran through everything I've done. So I don't know what there else there is to say. Thanks for having me on. Good night, everybody. Yeah, everyone, <laughs> and that's actually what Brooksy says every time. And that's all we have for the show, everybody. You get your <laughs> wrap up conclusion. Now, I want to go into first, James, about the memo that you did for me. Let's get that right out of the way first. It's on my 30th birthday, actually, and I'm still 30, of course. I haven't jumped the year in over a few months. But it was on August the 21st, 2021. My good friend of mine, Andre LaFrancois, and his girlfriend, Jayla, uh, gave me one of the best gifts to date, for real. Uh, it was it was put on our Games Sports Show Instagram page, social media pages, on my personal page. And you can check that out, listeners, just so you know. If you want to take a quick pause and do that, you can. And the comments on social media... Okay, and we've had a lot of great guests on the show, but the we want James hashtag, okay, James was floating all over the place. I guarantee you we almost hit trending numbers if you would have searched on Google. That's how good it was. And now, you know, we're together here doing the show. That was just me, by the way. I was (laughs) (laughs) not I just came up I just came up with the hashtag and just went just fed that computer nonstop. Just hashtag. Good man. Good man. I love that. Now, you know, I'm happy that, you know, we got connected and we got this going on. And joke aside, Memo is certainly popular and there's other ones that, you know, that celebrities are involved with and obviously sports figures, figures in the world, obviously. But you got into one story one time when I looked into the back of your memos where you got into a fight apparently or something about Man U Garden story. 
I kind of wanted to bring, I wanted to bring that up. So it gives you the opportunity to promote that you're doing that obviously. And just a touch on your memo to me and this man, you garden story. It's pretty hilarious. Oh, that was uh, I can't even remember that. I did that in the memo. It must've been a, a soccer fan or somebody who loved Liverpool or man, you. So when I was in grade eight, I lived in Ottawa and I did an exchange to England. Uh, it was really cool actually. So we went there for a month at the beginning, like October, we spent the entire month of October in England. And then the English guy came back and came to Canada for a month in the spring. So my friend was a big, massive Liverpool. His name was Guy Watson. I was in this little town in rural England and he was a massive Liverpool fan. And he had, it's hard to describe, but it was like a blackboard but a blackboard that he had like done artistically uh, with all these Liverpool logos all over. And it was all over in his room. And so it wasn't like something he erased every day. He probably worked on it for like a year. And his brother kind of egged me on. He had an older brother. You know how older brothers are. And I didn't really uh, know a ton about Premier League soccer back then, but I always liked Man United. And so my, his brother's like, erase the blackboard and write Man United stuff on there. So I did. And I thought it would be kind of funny because it's just a blackboard. But the, he like freaked out and like pulled me into the backyard. And it was like probably uh, Brooksy will be embarrassed by this by playing a thousand pro hockey games. But it's I've only had like two fist fights in my life. And this was one of them in the back in this guy's garden. <laughs> and I'm bill I'm billing it at his house. And it wasn't really it was probably more like an NBA fight. There's a lot of this going on and, <laughs> and rolling around in the backyard in the mom's garden and the mom's out yelling, get go on, get off him, get off him, going. <laughs> and it was, a, it was just a very weird, embarrassing experience. But uh, that's when I learned basically not to mess with English football fans. Oh, they're they're yeah. crazy is the word I want to use that they're really yeah. passionate about it. The hooligans. But yeah. you use that as a, I, I'm not, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because you can use BAMO for charity and uh, yeah. have various options. And I believe you have went down that Yeah, way. I give, uh, I, I, I'll be, when it started, and I think I got on Cameo first, uh, which Cameo is the one that started in the States, same deal as Memo. And uh, for your listeners or viewers who don't know, it's, you can send, yeah, personalized video messages to people and various celebrities charge whatever. Like if you want to get, uh, you know, some big name celeb, you're probably paying 500 bucks or a grand or something like that. A chump like me is about 50 bucks or something. But but uh, I felt kind of, I don't know. I felt kind of weird about it when it first came out, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it, it felt kind of cheap and cheesy to, you know, get 40 bucks off of somebody to send them a video. Like if you really, you know, if somebody really wrote me and said, send Dave a video, I'd probably do it for free, right? I shouldn't say this to memo people who mad at me. <laughs> but then I thought uh, if I could if I could throw uh, uh, most of the money to a good cause, then that would make it worthwhile. And so uh, uh, I have a little, um, I had a friend named Jonathan Pitcher who passed away called The Butterfly Child, who uh, you may have seen the documentary online. And, and I try to, to promote his charity as much as possible. So so yeah, the most of the cash goes to this place called Deborah Canada, which uh, fights a rare skin disease. So that makes it a little more tolerable. But uh, it is it's still a little bit weird. Although I've gotten used to it, it's kind of fun actually to connect with guys like you, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, you get really you get anniversary requests and wedding requests and a lot of fantasy football league stuff and fantasy hockey league where guys want to just you know you to do the introduction at their draft and you get some weird birthday wishes and stuff but it's kind of fun and it's a piece of cake right you can sit in your room and yeah. rhyme off two or three of these so i i get a pretty good kick out of it i'm glad you like yours that's oh, awesome i have it stored away and literally i it's plagued the week. oh i hear about it all the time i hear about it all the time <laughs> but you know what you mentioned the people that charge a, a decent amount for it i've seen some i'm not going to mention the person's name okay just in case something happens where he shows up my door because he's actually a football athlete so he would probably take me outside and beat me up my garden uh if you will uh but you know he he charged about a thousand dollars for it uh and you know i i honestly i'm gonna say flat out i'm not just saying that's because you're there your video was longer and i think better and i mean that <laughs> with and I, well i think I, you know a lot of people and again this comes from you know i'm about a z grade celebrity but like the a grade celebrities they probably don't have much time so they just And for people who don't know how memo works, you can actually write a script. I think with your friends, they just told me a little bit about you, right? And I just went off, which is what I prefer to do. But people will write an exact script for you 
and it appears on your phone just like a teleprompter would in a TV studio. And I think with the with the big celebs, you know, somebody will write a little one paragraph skip. Hey, happy birthday, Dave. I hear you love the Blue Jays and, you know, whatever, and have a great day. And you can tell they just read exactly what's written to them yeah, and right. boom, boom, they're gone. But it's, I think it's a little more fun if you can personalize it, and goof around a little bit. 100%. Brooks, they might have to get you one. I don't know for who. Uh, <laughs> did, did you know any, uh, any celebrities when you played hockey there, my friend? You know, oh, you yeah. Oh, there's come. lots. There's yeah. lots. We'll have to talk about that for sure. Yeah. You're well, Brooksy, you know, you know, I meant to say it, it uh, for anybody on here, not that there's many that uh, listen to my podcast, you would know that my wife's last name is Brooks and I call okay. her Brooksy. And oh, she's yeah. like, a, she's a character on my podcast. So every time you say that, Dave, I, uh, I, I'm thinking of my wife who's, oh, uh, see. You know, I'll always be so Brendan. You're we're we're kindreds now with that, all right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm okay with it. Awesome. No, you know what? Honestly, I think I, I think, sorry, I think I tweeted once, uh, and this is true. Uh, so whenever we get in like some sort of argument, uh, this is like my favorite thing to do in life because my wife doesn't like sports really at all, right? And so, uh, if we're if she questions something I say or whatever, I always come back with, I guess that's what I'm saying, Brooksy. Uh, <laughs> The old tort slide, and, and she doesn't understand what I'm saying. I think it's the funniest thing in the oh, world. Torts is a, we're going to talk about torts a little bit later in terms of the quiz, okay? And I know the quiz is patented, pot, everything with TSN, so I find but not anything here. But I love watching the quiz, okay? Like when you have Maple Leaf or Leafs hockey, if I should say one, well, TSN, uh, definitely when the quiz comes on, you have the panel. You guys have always had the stack panel, and we're going to dive into that. But you have been behind the screen for, you know, quite – quite a good chunk of time and you know what i was told and i never thought the story was told until i heard you on another podcast uh and you, the journey of you getting behind the desk i think you can correct me if i'm wrong and you're going to tell that i did some research and you know everyone that watches and listens to the show knows that brooksy myself and the other crew we have a key thing where we don't follow a script we like to keep it natural but i wanted to get some background with this and i was told this by my fiance's father actually and the story that he brought up was that um, that originally, when you got offered a job within Sports Center and hockey, the original job was supposed to go to a female who did the weather, uh, and it's someone that you knew that did it out in Vancouver. And a couple days before the season happened, it wasn't going to work with her, whatever reason that you brought up. Uh, you ultimately got offered the role, and look now how it worked out. So I kind of wanted to dive into that story. I didn't know yeah. how much detail you can get into it, but no, I'm. I, it's pretty much all ancient history now. So my my life's an open book. Uh, well, look, I loved hockey growing up, but. I wasn't, my, my dream wasn't to be a hockey broadcaster, which is probably different from, you know, most young guys who grew up to want to be a broadcaster in Canada. I always wanted to do football play by play. That was my, that was sort of my thing. You know, football and hockey have sort of been one and one A is my favorite sports forever. Although golf has crept up in recent years, but uh, uh, you know, I love them both. But as far as an announcing perspective, I wanted to do football. And so that's kind of where I thought my career was tracking at TSN. I had done a bunch of different things. I hosted NBA and CFL for a while and Sports Center, And I was starting to do football play-by-play. -play. I'd done about 10 games, I guess, for TSN. And I, so when we got the hockey rights back in 2002, I didn't apply for any of the jobs. I, you know, they had Gord Miller and Bob McKenzie and all these guys around. And I just didn't think, you know, it probably wasn't right for me. And I didn't even politicize or go for it or call my boss and even ask and they built this big studio uh, halfway across the building that everybody was talking about I hadn't even gone in to see it basically and I was on a golf trip with my buddies at the end of the summer right before the in September right before the season the weekend before the season started and I got a call from my boss and he said it was a Sunday night and the season was starting on Tuesday and he said can I come over to your house tonight and I was just driving home from this golf weekend kind of hung, hung over and going why does my boss want to come to my house like I, I got got along well with my boss but he never has come to my house before and so I was trying to put two and two together and you're right TSN had hired uh, Keith Pelly used to be the boss of TSN he's now the head of the European golf tour and uh, he had hired this young lady from Vancouver who I had worked with in Vancouver we launched a local tv station out there and I was a news reporter and and she did the weather and, and she was actually incredibly, really good. She did like the breakfast show and the weather and she was excellent and really, really nice person. 
and they hired her to host hockey. And I think she would admit it, she didn't really know much about, a ton about hockey. But back then was the days, you know, MTV and much music and all that. And they just wanted mm -hmm. a host who could walk around the studio and, and they figured, well, she can just throw to the analyst and they were gonna have bands in the studio and all sorts of crazy stuff. And they just wanted somebody who could walk and talk and engage. And they didn't figure she had to know that much about hockey, but the rehearsals didn't go very well. And she didn't feel comfortable. They didn't feel comfortable. And hence, my boss shows up in my house that night and says, do you want to host, do you want to be the host of hockey on TSN? And it's strange because, like I said, I never really thought about it. But when someone says that to you, uh, it's hard to say no to. And so I think it took me about a minute and a half to say, yeah, of course, I'd, well, are you crazy? I'd love to do that. And uh, that's how it happened. So, uh, yeah, fateful thing. It all, it, you know, sometimes I think back and go, what, what would happen? Would I ended up, you know, doing football play by play? Uh, but I can't. I can't regret anything that's happened to me in my career because that opened a, just a ton of doors. Uh, and uh, it's just been so much fun the last, whatever it's been now, 17 years, I guess, hosting hockey on TSN. Yeah, yeah well, I just, you know, obviously you were just talking about all the stuff that uh, you've been doing, you know. Uh, I just want to talk a bit about, you know, you've done the Masters, World Juniors, Olympics, you know. We'll get into that a little bit more. You've done commercials, as we said, acting, and I'm just curious about becoming a, a, an author. You know, you've done, you've gotten into writing a fair amount of books, and uh, yeah. you know, I just curious how you entered into these different different avenues, and uh, you know, on top of being a sports broadcaster. Yeah, I'm. Uh, so let's start with the writing. Uh, I took journalism at Carleton, as Dave said in the intro, and I missed that when I got into TV. Uh, I, I missed writing. Uh, I think that's, I can't say that's why I got into journalism, but I think it was, I wasn't very good at a lot of things in high school, but I think I was a pretty decent writer. I had this really good teacher in grade 12 English who just let me, her assignment would just be just write about anything, right? And, you know, my whole schooling before that had been do, you know, formal reports. And she just said, just go write something. Just hand me two pages on anything. So that sort of got my creative juices flowing and I thought I was decent at it. And you get into TV and you never write anymore. So when I got to TSN, I started writing a column for TSN.ca and really started enjoying the writing and then had opportunity to do some books. And the one thing I would say, Brooksy, is that a book, there is something about it, like it, it's got a permanence to it, right? Um, mm -hmm. And like, here's, I'm not trying to flog my book, but beauty is my oh, yeah. least, and it's sitting here on the desk, right? And so you have this thing that you can, you know, your grandkids might read, right? Or your great grandkids, it's kind of permanent and it's always yeah. there. And whereas TV, it's not like I'm gonna be there in 20 years and saying, hey, remember that panel that Bob McKenzie and I did about the Leafs power play, right? It's just, <laughs> yeah, it's when, so when, when you do TV, it just goes poof into nowhere, right? Right. And so uh, I really like, it sounds hokey, but it's kind of like you create a little piece of art uh, you, you know, I, you could argue about how, how artistic my books are, but it's this little piece of art and it's a hell of a lot of work doing a book, but it's really satisfying when it's actually done and you feel like you've created something permanently. So uh, I only do one every about three years because they exhaust me. They take up so much time, but I love doing it. As for the other stuff, uh, the, <laughs> the commercials, you're probably the, the the source commercials, which only run about a million times a day on TSN. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been getting pretty much uh, uh, serious ribbing by everybody I know for those. But I and I've always tried to resist commercials to an extent. I don't do that many. Uh, I did some Pepsi stuff last year because Love it was them. kind of funny. Love they them. were different, right? And the and the source ones. The the hook for me was that they uh, asked my whole family to be in it, so I had all. You know, my three kids are all kind of university high school age and, and they thought it was they got a kick out of it. And so I thought, ah, it would be kind of cool to do a commercial with your entire family. So that's why I did that. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's fun doing all yeah. these different things. And the movie, the goon, goon thing was was super cool. Jay Baruchel is a friend of mine and uh, he asked me to be a part of that. And the coolest thing about that, you know, besides working with T.J. Miller is I kind of figured we shot all our scenes in. I don't know, two hours at TSN. And uh, there was mostly ad lib, basically the whole thing besides some outline script. 
they were doing. And he was funny as hell. <laughs> and But I thought, you know, when we did it, I thought it was going to end up on the cutting room floor or there'd be like one scene, right? Maybe maybe one line would get in in the background of a shot. And then I go to the premiere. And first of all, we're the opening scene of the movie. Yeah. yeah. And then we're in, like, we're in, I don't know, we have like 20 scenes. and Like, they literally used every single thing we shot that day. <laughs> I said I should have bargained for. I think I got paid seven hundred and forty bucks for my role in Goon too. I should have held out for a little more cash. <laughs> yeah. uh, he was That's funny. He was funny when he was swearing. I forget all the lines that he was saying. You were being professional. Well, I tell you, he, he we were doing. We came up with an idea of doing, uh, and it might have been Jay's idea. I don't remember because Jay was directing in there that day, and uh, we were. Do- he was doing like Sports Center, what we call taglines, like you know. See it, live it, TSN, right? Those, 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 those lines mm-hmm. he used for a, uh, you know, sports center. Sports lives here, <laughs> and he just kept throwing out these random lines, uh, and they were just. It was like sports center, fuck yeah, like, <laughs> sports center. It's pink on the inside. It was just. It was just. It was like, and I couldn't stop laughing. Uh, anyway, how do you uh, it keep it so like, <laughs> I, I, well, I couldn't like I there's yeah. there's outtakes there where I was just I was just losing it because he's a funny dude and he, and he was really he making me laugh. Yeah. I I actually met uh, Jay in the UK out in uh, Glasgow. He was uh, doing some, Jay Baruchel. Yeah, I got to meet him out there. He came and to uh, I was actually playing there to end uh, at the end of my career there, and uh, he came out to uh, he wanted to come on the ice. He wanted to meet all the guys. I, I was really amazed actually how much he loves hockey. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, he was, yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he's he really does. I mean, he wrote a book about his love for the Montreal Canadiens, which is really cool. Uh, and, you know, how his dad passed that on to him. But, uh, yeah, he, he's a great dude. And originally, the entire panel was supposed to be in that movie. Like, Bob McKenzie and, I don't know, Dregs or whoever was working with us at that time. The panel, so many people have changed spots. But, but I, you know, the Hollywood types got a hold of it and, Slowly, the panel was, ended up just being me, and I'm, I'm surprised they let me stay on. But uh, I guess Jay fought for me, which is very kind of him. And I, I had a, a char- I had a character name too. They they changed my name from James Duffy to like, you know, Chuck Miller or something like that. I don't know. And uh, and then at the last second, they said, "Why don't we just call you James Duffy?" Uh, see, and he also something that I really enjoyed watching. I'm a I'm a '91 birth year, so American Pie was in kind of the peak before I hit the- right hit the teens area. So seeing Sean William Scott, I like Stifler, obviously no yeah. Stifler. That would have been probably the amongst one of the coolest things. Right. And you also- it was very cool. And we were at the, the after party of the premiere. Uh, I got to hang out with Sean William Scott for a while. And uh, he was very nice, you know, and he said to me, Hey, you know what? You were really good in that movie, right? Like, I know you had no experience. You were really good. And I, I you know, he's probably blowing smoke up my ass, but it was still very cool for him to say that. Right. <laughs> That and he hey, also- Stifler thought I was good. <laughs> Where's your mom? No, just <laughs> no, you and also Liv Scriber, too. You call him Sabretooth if you want to call him Ray Donovan. I'm a big Ray Donovan fan. His show, Ray Donovan's awesome. But you, yeah. you were showing your books, and actually, that's what I wanted you to do was really show off your books. And there's the one that I really uh, wanted to dive into a little bit before we start diving into some of the sports center and master stuff, but uh, obviously greatest untold stories. And I know you probably don't want to give too much away of it for those who may have not have uh, read it. Uh, I know you've talked about it previously before, but there's a lot of stories that have such as uh, Paul Biz Nasty Bissonette, which is a friend of Brooks. He's mad. Uh, also got his team kicked out of a hotel in Winnipeg on game day. Uh, Crosby's unusual nickname. There's Stamkos' dad stealing Steve Eisman's uh, car, I believe. Uh, like <laughs> what, is there any stories, maybe one of those three, or is there maybe a story that you want to tell uh, that can kind of be a little teaser about the book? And it's been like a year now. I don't mind talking about it because it's been out for a year. It's out in paperback, by the way, if anybody wants to buy one for uh, somebody for Christmas. Got to throw in a plug there some way. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So I, I did all so many interviews on the book last year. Uh, and they're all, you know, people say, what's your favorite one? And I'm not sure that there is a favorite one. Uh, it was cool to hear, you know, like Cros- the Crosby story is really cool. Is uh, it's the first chapter of the book and how uh, uh, his his nickname is Daryl. Nobody called, and I'd never heard that. Right, I've followed Sid's entire career, but it's basically only a bunch of kids who played with him in Ramuski that call him Daryl. And 
a simple way that hockey guys get nicknames his first night in Ramuski as it playing an exhibition game. So he's 16 years old playing against, you know, 19 and 20 year olds. And he had eight points early in the third period. And uh, so the veterans who were all not playing that night, they were sitting in the stands and uh, you know, one of them says, Hey, who was that guy on the, the Leafs that got 10 points in a game? Guy goes, Daryl Sittler. From then on, Sid was Daryl. And in fact, his first yeah. year with the Penguins, he had Daryl written inside his gloves uh, wow. and on his stick the entire season. So yeah. that's a good one. The other one, I just from, from you know, it was a really interesting book to do because essentially what the book is, it's called Beauties, Hockey's Greatest Untold Stories. And I basically, I've been sitting on that panel for two decades and I have all these ex-players beside me and, you know, Brooksy, you know this better than ever. Hockey is one of the greatest sports for just storytelling, right? You sit oh, around yeah. having a bunch of beers and everybody's, I'm sure Brooksy has 50 chapters worth of stories. Like every hockey player, no matter how boring they are, have a, at least a few great stories. And so my mm -hmm. idea was just to get, to call up people and say, what? tell me your favorite hockey story. I don't care if it's off the ice, in a game, funny, serious, whatever. Just tell me a great hockey story. And so being able to call guys like Gretzky and, and Sid and McDavid and Bobby Orr and and sit and either face to face or on the phone, talk to them for a couple hours, tell them stories was a, was just a, an incredibly cool experience. That's a great, that's a great uh, thing, Brooksy. You should do a, you, you uh, yeah. probably tell some stories over. Oh, yeah, Brooksy, the untold uh, oh, yeah. stories. There you go, <laughs> yes. right there. Oh uh, yes. I'll yeah, tell you, I'll so tell funny. you one real fast. Uh, one of my favorite chapters in the book, John Cooper, coach of the Lightning, uh, and this was the in September of the year he won the, they won their first Stanley cup. I guess I was talking to him and he was one of the first guys I talked to just cause we're old friends. And, and he told me a story that's in the book about when he was coaching Syracuse before he made it to Tampa. And I won't tell the whole story, but basically it involves uh, a carjacking. Uh, Dustin Tokarski is his goalie and gets carjacked on a game day. They were going to Binghamton to play a big game. Uh, Tukarski gets carjacked at night point, spends the whole day at the police station. There's a car chase for his car, um, a police chase that ends in a crash. Tukarski and Cooper end up getting to the game late, right as the anthem goes. Cooper tells Tukarski to just stay in the dressing room. Uh, you know, he's rattled, take the night off. Um, Binghamton scores five goals in the first period and is up 5 nothing. And then there's a fight, a full-scale brawl, including a goalie fight. Robin Leonard was the goalie for Binghamton against Rico Salius is the goalie for Syracuse. And they both get kicked out. And now Hughes has no goalie. And they're down 5 nothing. And so he had, they have to dig Tukarski, who's still shell-shocked from getting carjacked, out of the dressing room, put on his gear. He goes in, uh, I think with five minutes left in the second, uh, pitches a shutout. Syracuse scores six straight goals and wins in overtime. <laughs> and so Cooper started telling me that story. And I'm like, that's exactly why I wrote this book for stories like that. Yeah. The carjacking, a goalie fight, one of the most oh, ridiculous yeah. comebacks ever. And so that the, <laughs> the, the, book, the book is full of stuff like that. Love that. Yeah. Well, it's amazing. You know, as you know, as, as hockey players, as you say, we are, we're full of stories, but we're, I think a lot of hockey players, they're really open guys. Like we're very open personalities, a lot of us. And, uh, you mm -hmm. know, we're willing to share our own experiences, you know, no matter what. It's pretty wild. Yeah, I think that's true. I think that's true. And uh, that's why I say I think hockey probably has the, there's something about the nature of the game and the, uh, you know, the camaraderie and such that, and the type of players that you guys are that it just, I think it generates better stories than sports like baseball and football and basketball. Always, funny. and then there's always the tight net. If finding hockey, and I didn't go as far as Brooksy did, of course, because I'm not. I don't have a page long hockey DB page. <laughs> Mine's more like three, uh, three different teams and whatever it is. But the, the stories are. He empty. always, just so you know, James, he always <laughs> finds a way to plug his hockey career. Every <laughs> the, the tier two junior hockey career compared to your yeah. professional, it's. Uh, hey boys, it's you, good. you, it's you, all you, good. You, you got to do it. That's right. I didn't even make it that far, so. Uh... I was, I, I made rep, I played one year, I lived in BC when I was a kid, so I was a soccer player and moved to Ottawa when I was eight, so I was about, I couldn't skate at eight, and so I was five years behind everybody, and so 
ended up playing house league, finally caught up a little bit and made, uh, made rap at like 14. And then I got into girls and, and quit hockey at 15. So there you go. <laughs> it's a shame. The host of hockey on TSN is terrible. No, that, I think that's a way better accolade. And what I like, I said, it's that's awesome. And when I, your voice echoes in our living room in here. Okay. And now that I had you on my fiance is like, you're actually going to have him, you know, like uh, you talk to him on your show, someone you watch, right. It's cool having all the great guests that we have, but have somebody that you, you know, it feels like you and I are friends even before we met, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, we are. Right? Now we, there he is. There he is. <laughs> yeah, there it is. But, uh, but well, you know what? I feel like Canada is that kind of country too, where you, uh, you know, I feel like through friggin' podcasts and different world juniors, you, you kind of feel like you've met half the country sometimes, which is which is a very cool thing about it, right? And you're using everyone's nickname like you know them. You know, that's, like, right. <laughs> that's the way it goes. What are you, by the way? Quagsy? Quagsy? Uh, what are you? What are not you? that close. Kager. 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 Of course. Yeah. That was. Kager. How do they miss that? Mm. You know, yeah. and, and the funny <laughs> thing about that is McKag obviously spelled MC, MCCAIG for me, but the hockey player that obviously plays the NHL yeah. has MCKEGG. KEG, yeah. Yeah. And his way is so much better than mine. Okay. Like I tell my dad, whoever. Whatever we need to tell in our ancestry, whoever made the name this way and back in Scotland, or my mom's Italian, so I got the Italian Scottish, but of course, she's Roquetta, I'm a McKeg, so I got stuck with the Scottish last name, and I said, it's spelt the wrong way. Ah, uh, buddy, try, to, try, try being Duffy, because uh, obviously the people who watch TSN might know me, but most people say Duffy all the time, like <laughs> D-U-F-F-Y, <laughs> and, uh, and then people, you know, if you're at the... Uh, you know, those any any place, some government place where they have to call out your name, passport office or something, it's always Doofy, James Doofy, Doofy, please to the front, Doofy. So uh, it's a curse. It's a curse last name as well. Oh, yeah, it's uh, the nicknames are fun, though. Now, a couple topics that we're going to dive into before we wrap up. The next thing I want to dive into, it's kind of uh, got a lot of ties in because obviously the jack of all trades, you do obviously a lot. And the thing that we want to dive into is, you know, we're talking major league golf and hockey here. And Brooksy is the golfer out of us too. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you, James, uh, my golf swing is horrendous. I had one drive hit 314 yards and I still tell everyone about it because never, I'll never was, come close to that ever in my life again. And no one was saw that on pay. Was that on pavement? <laughs> Nobody's rolling. seen it. Nobody's one seen it. Saw it. He was alone. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, I that's why I just try to brag about it. But Brooksy's definitely the golfer. Heck, he is hockey too. But in terms of following well, golf. Well, they usually go hand in hand. If you're playing yeah. hockey and golf, you're, yeah, you're going to be a golfer. But you obviously, but. golf is a big part for yourself. You know, uh, Jack Nicholas, uh, Tiger Woods, Mike, Mike Weir, when he won the Masters in the early thousands, there was something that I obviously remember. But there's a lot of golf that is uh, well followed for our listeners. But obviously, there's Trade Center for yourself, too. There's the TSM points. So I want to dive into a couple of those ends. And I'll start with the hockey for that Brooksy. Uh, dive into the golf side of things a little bit more. Uh, Sidney Crosby's golden goal. Okay. Again, me doing a little bit of research, hearing things. Uh, what, and I believe this is when you're promoting your book on one of the Canadian broadcast stations. You almost missed that Crosby goal, I believe, because you were checking a peewee score, I believe. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we had a really cool setup. Uh, and you know, 2010 is probably the highlight of my career. I, I love the Olympics uh, to death. I was an Olympic geek since I was a little kid. And to be able to cover it in your home country was unbelievable. And I had a really cool job where I anchored during the day on CTV with Lisa Laflamme. And then I would go down and do the Canadian hockey games at night when they were playing. Uh, so to be there for that moment, which, you know, to me, for my generation, probably for years too, that's you know, for our parents, it was Paul Henderson, but for me, that's that's the you know the greatest moment in Canadian sport in my time. And uh, we had a, a really cool little set that kind of popped out over the Zamboni area in the intermissions. And during the the game, we would actually sit in the stands. We had seats in the stands, so only maybe six rows back behind the Zamboni, so right behind where Ryan Miller was there. And my son happened to be playing a. Uh, it was Pee Wee or Bantam, but probably Pee Wee, you're right, um, playoff game back back then and in Barrie, Ontario. And, you know, it's kids hockey, so you're into it. So I kept checking my phone for scores. And my phone buzzed. 
and I was looking down, checking the text from somebody who'd given me an update on this game. And, and the arena was so quiet because it was so tense that as I was reading this message, I, I heard Crosby yell Iggy. And so basically just looked up in time to see him score the goal 20 feet from me. And, uh, yeah, I always say to myself, man, I, I almost missed the greatest moment in Canadian sports history. And at least in my opinion, uh, for a peewee hockey score. <laughs> Brooksy would have, wouldn't have even looked up probably because when people pass him the puck, he doesn't he doesn't look. He keeps... <laughs> That's right. Head down and shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Lap bomb from the top of the circle is Brooksy's trademark. Okay, and he still oh, does. Yeah. He still does They're it dangerous. immensely. James, and he They're snipes. Dangerous. He's a uh-huh. he's still he's that he's a pro, former pro hockey player in men's league that everyone <laughs> just tries to have three men on that doesn't work. He's like the Connor McDavid of the men's yeah. league, if you will. Yeah. Uh, you know, and obviously the World Juniors, James. Okay, like it's. That's there's between Trade Center, which I call Christmas morning, which I'll get into because I it's good. You, I don't take time off work for it, especially now because the way life is. But I still have it streaming, you know, uh, in the background with the cup of coffee. You're working, you're you have it up uh, where I'm at. I get I'm a manager where I'm at, so I kind of luck out to have my own spot and look at. Uh, and it's like Christmas morning when you have Sports Center, okay? Or Sports well, Sports Center, yeah. Trade Center. Trade Center. Thank you. I, I don't think of it that way, so thank you, David, because it's. Uh... <laughs> kind of a royal pain in the ass for me now it's it, it's fun i used to hate it in many ways because there was so much fear uh that nothing would happen and uh, but and then you know you get anxiety before how are we going to fill 10 hours but i think a few years ago i just sort of came to terms with it and i realized that even if nothing happens we have 15 16 commentators in there just to tell stories and 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 talk hockey and so i, I kind of think of it as a a celebration of Canadian hockey as much as anything else, right? Where in what other country would, as you say, people like yourself watch the show where quite often it's trades, you know, for six, six defensemen for a fourth round draft pick or something like that, right? <laughs> trades that if happened, if they happened a month earlier would barely get mentioned on sports center, but because it's trade deadline, we'll talk about them for an hour. But for me personally, I think it's your job as host just to be the fan, and that's what I am, uh, but ask the same questions that the fans would want me to ask and, you know, to sit next to guys like Ferraro and, and Craig Button and Mike Johnson and Jeff O'Neill and Bob McKenzie and Dregs and so on. I could go on and on and on. It's just, uh, I mean, that's, that's a really cool experience. I just take it as 10 hours where I can sit around and ask some really smart hockey guys, hopefully semi-intelligent questions about hockey. So uh, I've come to enjoy it. Uh, over the years, but it wasn't always that way. O Dog is an absolute beauty on there. Too. Yeah, he is. But you, yeah. have, <laughs> you have like with the World Juniors too, right? Like it, I would say, and this may not be fair. I mentioned Trade Center be a big part of TSN. Obviously, hockey on there, of course. But I think like the World Juniors. When you think of the World Juniors, you do think of TSN. You know, like I feel like that that goes hand in hand. I don't know if you think. I that think you're right. Day, because like obviously you guys have the the, the area, the rights, etc. But like it would, it's been that way for I don't know how many years that you guys have had the World Juniors now. But it's, it seems like that there, there's that partnership. And whenever Christmas breaks around, students are in from L, from uh, university. All the families are gathering. Boxing Day, you're watching Canada probably play if it's the states or if it's well, actually the states games mostly New Year's I guess. But like those types of games to start the tournament, and you're watching Canada throughout the entire Christmas holidays. You have TSN basically on. You're streaming throughout your TV and in your living room throughout the entire of the holidays because of the World Juniors. I think that, uh, thank you, first of all, but it, you know, if for it was a, a basically a, just a convenience thing for TSN at first. They needed, they had nothing in their schedule way back when over the holidays. And so they picked up this tournament, which was really just a, you know, uh, no different than uh, most Christmas hockey tournaments that you go to Brooksy and minor hockey where, you know, there might be a couple of hundred fans in the stands and, you know, obviously mm-hmm. better players, but uh, it wasn't a big deal. And TSN needed something to fill a void in the schedule and picked it up all those years ago. And, and I think didn't know what they had probably when they got it and then realized a couple of years later that, you know, Canadian fans love Canadian hockey and, love that kind of passion of hockey and that that you that I my personal opinion the best hockey we see every year is the world juniors right because you have you have kids that first of all make mistakes and mistakes make for good hockey games 7-5 yeah. hockey games and 
there's just so much passion involved at that age. Um, you know, they haven't been jaded like pros sometimes are. And, and they're just so good and so skilled now. So I think it was TSN got lucky in many ways to get it. But we, I, I think I can take uh, the, net, the network can take credit for the idea that we have done a good job growing it uh, and turn it into this sort of behemoth that it is right now. And you know what? Some people criticize it today. When It's funny. It, when Canada wins, everyone's happy. When Canada loses, you'll always have a handful of critics come out and say, well, TSN puts too much pressure on these kids. And I always come back with, that might be true, but all of these kids want that pressure. 100%. Every Canadian kid, they all want to be on that team to be in that position. They love the fact that, you know, whatever, 5 million people are watching a gold medal game. That That's, I always say that kids, and Brooks, you can attest to this, have two dreams now, right? To win the Stanley Cup is still first probably and play in the NHL, but secondly would be to play in the World Juniors for Canada. And, oh, 100%. Right. So, uh I don't think, you know, pressure, this is what they want. This is the, the, the exact position they want is for us to be talking about them every night and building up the hype for a semifinal game or a gold medal game. And uh, if they lose, so be it. It's still an incredible experience for them. But uh, uh, I, it's my favorite event of the year, David. Well, I, I, I love it every single year. Well, as an athlete and then these young kids, you know, I, I just think I got I didn't get to play World Juniors for Canada, but I played in the Spangler Cup with Canada and I played in line for Canada. Uh, you know, there's something about when you put that jersey or, you know, you're 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 shooting to be a part of that that team. It, it's you know, I mean, it doesn't matter. Like you said, the kids will do anything to be right. a part of that and be it. And that's the beauty of it. And uh you know what I mean? I, 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 since I retired, I miss that feeling. Like, it's just like that. I want to go get that. You know what I mean? I just want to find something like that, uh, to have that. Feeling yeah. Again. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I know, but it's, it's, it's really special. Uh, uh, it's my favorite two weeks. It's my family says it's ruined Christmas for them for basically their entire lives. Cause I'm always taking off somewhere Christmas day, but, but now they're old enough. They, they come off and with me and they love it. So it's a, uh, it's a real treat. Brooks, I'll let you dive into golf. Yeah, no, I just, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I, I'm a golfer and, and I've seen that you've been, uh, you know, able to play with uh, your son. You know, I, I, I saw a couple, you know, pictures there on Instagram and, and that for me was something, uh, you know, for me and my dad, it, it's such a great thing and, uh, and how passionate I've become about golf. And, you know, like you said, you are as well. And, you know, you've covered the, the Masters and uh, you did an interview with uh, Jack Nicholas, someone that you've looked up to. And, uh, you know, I just I'm just curious about some stories that you have and, uh, you know, with golf and and everything that you've been a part of with the Masters. Yeah, well, so I, I played uh, growing up, but we, we lived like sort of middle class neighborhood Ottawa. We didn't have a ton of money and my dad wasn't a golfer. So me and I started playing when I was 14 and me and my buddy Mark would sneak on this course, Pineview Municipal Golf Course, which is uh, it's I heard it's nice now, actually. But it was a bit of a dog track when I played it. And we would we would take the bus in the dark at 430 in the morning and sit on the first tee until the sun came up, because if we got past the ninth hole before like 615 a.m. before anybody got there, we could. 18 there was a bus stop right by 18 we never we so we never pay and so that's a long-winded way of saying that i i played a little golf when i was younger but was never real great at it or anything but and you know then i had th we had three kids in four years and so i wasn't playing much and uh over the last five years i've really gotten into golf so it's probably my number one passion and i end up watching probably more golf than any other sport even hockey i'll watch lpga i'll watch the champions tour i'll watch ncaa golf i'll watch anything um so when we lost the hockey rights uh a few years ago the the bonus for me was that it opened me up to as david had said earlier to do other sports as much as i love hockey and i still get to do a ton of hockey and now i get to do the masters every single year i also get to do the super bowl and the gray cup and things like that but uh the, yeah, I said the World Juniors is my favorite event every year. That's true. My favorite week every year is probably the Masters. Just, you know, I never thought I'd, you know, and I'm watching that on TV at home when I was 12 years old. I'm like, I always wanted, dreamt of going there. And I thought that was far-fetched, you know, to be able to even go there for a practice round, to be able to go there every single year and cover it. And uh, and I got to play 
four years ago, which was unbelievable. There's a media draw on the Monday. Uh, so every year, about 20 guys in the media get to play uh, Sunday pins, Brooksy, and, and play the course. And that's one, four of the greatest hours of my life to be able to play Augusta National. Um, so I'm trying to cover everything here in two minutes. But, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, you know, to the year that Tiger won, if you're, if you're listing the greatest things I've covered in my career – Certainly that gold medal game in 2010 that we talked about is probably number one, but right. The Raptors championship is up there, but uh, Tigers win, uh, whatever it was now to 2019. I've lost my years because of COVID Uh, (laughs) 2018, 2019 was uh, that was just an, uh, just an absolutely spectacular thing to witness. Uh, And now maybe we'll see another tiger come back, which would be unbelievable. (laughs) Uh, If he plays this April, it'll be insane. But uh that that was a highlight and brooks you mentioned jack nicholas just a couple of weeks ago i got to spend an hour and a half interviewing jack nicholas in ottawa at a banquet which was again uh just a just a real treat for him to tell his old stories uh you know those are the two golfers of all time and i've got to witness really cool things from each of them so uh yeah it's uh i just love golf that'll be my passion the rest of my life i was uh, i was a shitty crappy hockey player as i told you I played football most of my life and then touched football and flag football when I got older. And I finally quit about five years ago because I was getting beat up in beer leagues for no apparent reason. And so golf is all I do now uh, as far as real leisure time. And my wife would tell you, my the other Brooksy would tell you I'm completely and utterly uh, have an issue. I'm obsessed so much, but I just love the game so much. No, definitely. You know, honestly, you see that when you when you when when you see somebody talk about a sport they love compared to someone who's hosting it, there's a difference, right? You see that passion, and then I right. see that with what you're doing. And you know, obviously, one thing speaking of that, I think someone who doesn't have a passion about something, you might get a chuckle out of this. Uh, and this will be one thing before I uh, wrap up the show here. Uh, the the quiz, okay? John Tortorella hated. <laughs> the quiz so much okay like it, it, i've never seen someone on a panel and be so serious but yet so funny and i thought maybe someone like brian burke when he joined it uh, joined it before would be one as an example that would be serious mr truculence himself but when i saw tortorella doing the questions like you'd mention a question to him okay and he'd be like this is such a stupid fucking question he wouldn't swear but like he'd be like this is such a stupid question he's like why am i answering this question he'd look around he's serious so like if, if you're smiling i could see you're holding trying to hold in an absolute outburst of a laugh but how, talk about the quiz talk about john tortorella so yeah the quiz has been i don't know we've been doing it 15 years or so now and it's uh uh i call it canada's favorite game show the truth about the quiz really is if you think about it, it's just a gimmick to talk about a bunch of things. It's no different than a panel. It's just basically fitting four different subjects into a panel really fast and getting quick answers. Uh, but Torts, the reason Torts hated the quiz, because he hates gimmicks, first of all, uh, and, he, and basically the quiz is all hypotheticals, right? If Brooksy is going to get traded to uh, one team at the deadline, what's the best fit for Brooksy? You know, is it Vegas? Is it uh, Toronto? Is it and Brooke and, and Torch just hated that. He wanted the deal only in real, real things. He hated <laughs> hypotheticals. And he was a funny guy because he's actually super, super nice. Like one of the more misunderstood guys uh, off camera, nice, quiet, polite, really doesn't say much, but he'd get fired up on camera. And I love see he only was with us for, it's funny. He Torch was probably with us, I think three months. And then he got the job with, the Rangers, I guess. And uh, people, st- more people ask me about him than anybody else. <laughs> but I, I, I think he really is, uh, you know, he, he, he gives all these incredible sound bites that end up on Sports Center top 10 list. But away from the mic, he's actually extremely, extremely quiet. Really? And he actually wasn't a great analyst when he was with us. And I don't say that to criticize him. I think the only reason that he came to TSN was that. He wanted to change. He hated the fact that everybody saw all these clips of him yelling at Larry Brooks and everything. And he wanted to prove to people that he was calm, rational. And so he was actually pretty boring a lot of nights on TSN. And we didn't get a lot of fire from him, except when we did the quiz and he hated those questions. So that's why we, <laughs> we kept doing it. You know, and and I- just to one more thing, David, I, I will still text torts, uh, you know, time and again for whatever reason. And every single text that tort sends me 
uh, ends with the words, the quiz sucks. So, <laughs> it, it, you know, when, like when he was coaching Columbus last year, if he'd have a big playoff game and I'm like, Torts, what are you doing with your top two lines? And he'd say, okay, we're putting, you know, Pierre-Luc Dubois here and this guy here and this guy here. And then those last three words would be the quiz sucks. Every <laughs> single text. <laughs> I See, that's, it. That, that, that's the perfect way to end that question because that's how he would say yeah. he hated it. Now, James, obviously time flies when you're having fun. As you know that, of course, and Brooksy and I know that, of course. But I going to the wrap-up point, if you will, and I'd be damned if I didn't mention, obviously, Gino Retta and Bob McKenzie because they have home base ties for us. And for listeners outside of where our home base is, as used quotations here on video, uh, the Game Sports Show is based in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Okay, obviously okay. – we have an out. We have an outreach outside of Sault Ste. Marie, which is awesome. But I know Gino Retta and Bob McKenzie have ties to Sault Ste. Marie, so I want to make sure I put that little plug and shout out to Sault Ste. Marie. Because if I didn't, I can imagine the criticism uh, that we would get. Obviously, two people that you know quite well. So I you basically to- created you created the the Sault Ste. Marie star uh, created Bob McKenzie. That was his first gig. Yeah, it was the Sioux star. And obviously he still has archive articles that are well used today. Everyone loves. I'm sure. It's like me with my hockey career. You're always going back to saying Bob McKenzie worked here. In the <laughs> two. Uh, but the floor, I want to give you the floor to wrap up everything. Uh, you can talk about those two or uh, I kind of like to do something before we wrap up to allow our guests to talk about something within their life or something that they may want to chat about that we may have missed. Heck, maybe you want to chirp me and Brooksy, that's fine. Or maybe you want to talk about something I just brought up. Uh, either way, I want to bring you, uh, give you the floor before we do our sign off. So there's anything that you want to touch upon. No, I would never chirp you guys, man. You, uh, f- especially after I uh, missed our initial appointment uh, for the listeners, I was supposed to be on about four days ago and completely forgot. So uh, I really appreciate you guys hanging around and being uh, patient with me. No, I, I, you know, I just, all these stories, I really enjoy talking about this stuff because you don't, you know, you work like any other job, you work day to day. You know, I do my, like, I got CFL and Leaf Games and, you're just, you're just working and you don't really get a chance to think back about the moments that we were talking about tonight. That's why it's fun to do that. And I've just been incredibly lucky, like ridiculously lucky that this kind of geeky kid from Ottawa, uh, you know, TSN gave me a chance and has given me a chance to do all these things that we were talking about. I, I, you know, I don't want to like any athlete, I don't want to stop and look back right now, but I hope, you know, whenever they kick me off TV in a few years, maybe a few months, uh, (laughs) <laughs> that I'll have time and sit back and go, man, like the things I got to do uh, to be able to cover Olympic games and Super Bowls and NBA championships and, and Grey Cups and golf majors and uh, hopefully a World Cup of soccer next year uh, with Canada if they make it, uh, which is another, another unbelievable story. To be able to do all those things, are just I just never even fathomed when I was a kid growing up in Ottawa, I thought I was trying to be the local sportscaster. You know, TSN wasn't a big deal back then. Probably didn't, didn't exist when I was growing up. And I thought, man, if I could be the local guy doing the 1130 sports, you know, reporting on the Ottawa 67s and the Ottawa Rough Riders, that that would be, that would be a dream come true. So to be able to cover all the things I've been able to cover and be able to talk to great guys like yourselves and tell those stories is a, is a true pleasure. So thank you for having me on. Oh, it's an awesome. absolute treat. And you know what? I always tell my friend Andre that was the best uh, birthday gift I've received. I shouldn't say that too loud. Beyonce is in the other room. You know, I got you know, friends that might have something to say about that, but that was uh, absolutely mm. awesome. And so world of social media, you get connected. It's the way of right. world now. It's fantastic. It's great. It's great. Now, I'll, I'll get to the wrap up here, James. As I mentioned, time's flying by when you have fun. And I didn't even get a chance to do plugs for our advertisements. I apologize to our sponsors, Little Caesars Pizza. And Northern Superior Brewing Company, I have been sitting here having a pint uh, the entire time we've been telling stories. So there's my product placement for the show. Uh, take it or leave it, if you will. Uh, so I want to say thank you very much, James, for taking the time. And uh, Brooksy, I know you'll obviously want to say thank you. Yeah, I just want to thank you. I appreciate you um, taking the time uh, to do this for us. And uh, it's uh, much appreciated, my friend. Uh, no problem. Thanks again for having me. And Brooksy, like to play a thousand games of pro hockey, that, that's the one thing that, uh, you know, the one thing I try to do, and I'll leave you with this, I try not to rip guys on the air because, you know, and as a host, you don't really have to do that. It's kind of the analyst's job anyway. 
<laughs> but I think it's so crazy sometimes that we're, you know, we're paid to criticize guys that uh, make mistakes playing in the National Hockey League. Like if you think about the, the odds of playing professional hockey are so low and anybody who plays pro hockey at any level is a hell of a hockey player. And so for yourself to play a thousand games of professional hockey is, is an unbelievable accomplishment. And that, that's the one thing I think I've learned from my career is just respect for guys who, uh, uh, who've made it. Uh, so, you know, whether it's, you know, Brian Kilray, who I wrote my first book on, he kind of taught me something because he would never call, like he played a long time in the AHL and he would never call it the minors. For him, it was always the National League and the American League. And he always talked about them like they were equal, right? So he spent some time mm -hmm. in the National League, but he spent a lot of time in the American League. They're, they're all great leagues and no different from the ones you, you played in. So congrats on uh, and hanging around that long and playing pro hockey. As a guy, like yeah. I said, who uh, whose biggest accomplishment was being the leading scorer on the Blackburn Stingers Bantam team. <laughs> uh, you accomplished a lot. So uh, thanks a lot uh, for thank having you. me on both, both of you guys, David. It was awesome chatting with you. and. Uh, uh, Best of luck with everything. Definitely. Thank you. Uh, if there's ever a time down the road, I'll certainly send you uh, a message again sometime. Uh, most certainly. And if you ever want to check out something funny, James, look up Brendan Brooks when he played over uh, in the EIHL. Brooksy, what was the team? The Clan. Uh, you played for the Clan. There's a video when he scored on the bottom corner. He starts dancing. It's absolutely hilarious. Oh, yeah. you check it out. It's funny. <laughs> again. Uh uh, that's awesome, Brooksy. You should never do dance lessons, though. You know what? Maybe, I know. Maybe James <laughs> not can a dance. do dancing for you. I don't. I hey, don't you know that. what? The uh, the minor league stories are actually uh, are actually the best. I'll have to talk to Brooksy if I do a sequel. And I'm I'm just trying to find this one. One, one of my favorite Ronan's ride. So um, John Ronan was a, a guy who I, I just met through a friend, and I I he started telling me stories, and I said I have to put him in this book. So I. Uh, I'm just trying to look it up so I can remember all the teams he played for, Brooksy, just for your sake. Oh, here we go. So Ronan played mostly in, in mostly in North America, but he played for uh, the Alaska Aces, the Florida Everblades, the Rocky Mountain Rage, the Austin Ice Bats, the Huntsville Havoc, the Flint Generals, the Galeen Smoke Eaters in Holland, which <laughs> you might know, oh. and the Evansville Icemen. Oh. And uh, he had a – he just had – he was once traded – for a pair of skates, uh, literally, uh, involved in a trade for a pair of skates, literally in the <laughs> ECHL. So, uh, yeah, the minor league stories are the best. So you should you should uh, definitely try to tell them at some point. Uh, oh, definitely. He's got a bunch. Again, thank you, Brooks. I say thank you to you. Thank you to all the listeners. Again, of course, can not say thanks, thank boys. To James Duthie, fantastic, James. It's great. We will maybe be in touch down the road. Or either way, I'll still hear you in my living room. Most certainly. All right. All the best, boys. Definitely. Thank everyone for listening. Make sure to hit like, follow, and subscribe on all the platforms of the game, which reminds you Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Podbean, Podtail, Facebook, Instagram, our website is the or you can subscribe to the TGEM Network platform on YouTube. I'm here to remind you to keep your stick on the ice, swing your bats, catch your touchdowns, drain your threes, and shoot your shots. Booyah.